What the Falcons do, we rise up. Welcome to Rise Up Reactions, the show we talk all things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and in general, the sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning, the Golden Hard Doc, and a lifelong sports fan. Coming back to you today, finally putting out the AFC West video. Full spoiler alert, I'm kind of stupid and forgot my notes again on this, so I'm functionally doing this alive. I just had a little bit of time this morning and wanted to get this video out. Because uh, I don't know when I'm going to have time again. It's been quite busy over here at the clinic today, uh, the last few days, really. Just wanted to also point out, June is typically when we do a lot of our wellness visits. Just a little quick thing on healthcare. Wellness visits are important in the sense that it's the time that your doctors get a chance to talk to you about screenings, uh, wellness stuff, trying to make sure you're up to date on your vaccinations, any of that type of thing. Things that we really don't get a lot of time to talk to you about during the actual routine visits when you come in and you want to talk about your blood pressure, you want to talk about that ache that's been bothering you in your foot for a few months. It's just those visits, they don't give us enough time to really delve into it especially given how many people we have to see to make our you know to make our clinics actually profitable and make our clinics actually work for everybody uh, who works for us so it just provides us time where we dedicate time to sit down and talk about it. so please if you haven't scheduled a wellness with your primary care provider please do so it's a really important time for us to be able to talk to you about long-term health plans without further ado though let's jump into the AFC West let's talk about the Chargers so Chargers last year finished 5 and 12 it was a very bad year overall for this team um, they end up getting a, a new head coach they end up firing a bunch of people they lose some significant pieces some of the significant pieces that they've lost do include guys like Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Gerald Everett, Corey Lindsley at center. You're losing guys like Justin Hollins at the edge. You're losing defensive linemen Austin Johnson and Nick Williams. Linebacker Eric Kendricks, Kenneth Murray, both of them gone. Michael Davis at corner, Jalen Hawkins at safety, and Dean Marlowe also at safety. Ton of losses for this team. But also on the same note, they've had a fair amount of additions as well. Uh, you're getting J.K. Dobbins on a one-year deal as well as Gus Edwards. So basically the backups from Baltimore have uh, really one of the stars from Baltimore. But the backups from Baltimore have come in. Uh, D.J. Shark coming in, I don't think he's going to have a big role here. They're going to really be leaning on Quentin Johnson this year. Uh, as well as their draft pickup, which we'll talk about in a second. They are getting Hayden Hurst as a free agent tied in for a year for a deal. So I think that's a decent uh, decent prospect for Bradley Bozeman coming in at center. Bud Dupree signing a couple-year deal uh, and then getting a couple guys like Denzel Perryman, Christian Fulton, uh, Loey Gilman in the uh, in the defensive side of it. I think those are all awesome. Uh, Loey Gilman being a re-sign, obviously. But I think those are decent pickups. And then their uh, draft ended up being relatively good. Joe Alt, uh, I think, was a little bit of a surprise. I think a lot of people thought they would go for a wide receiver uh, like Roman Dunze uh, who, and Malik Neighbors. I think Malik Neighbors was still on the board there. But if you think about it, a lot of their woes came from offensive line poorness last year. They were one of the worst-rated offensive lines. And they're going to be looking to run the ball with their new head coach. Um, so Joe Alt may be the best tackle. He was kind of in a class all on his own by people who were grading out the draft. So I think he's a solid pick for him. Lad McConkey, solid Georgia receiver. He is probably going to be a sneaky candidate for wide receiver, best wide receiver rookie this year. They get Junior Colson, a linebacker, linebacker out of Michigan. Uh, Justin, uh, I don't know how to say this guy's name, but he was a defensive tackle at Alabama that I just remember wrecking, uh, wrecking offensive lines. Uh, they get a couple guys at corner. They get uh, uh, Vidal at, out of Troy at running back. Brendan Rice, wide receiver, pretty big name there. And then Cornelius Johnson as well. So we'll see what ends up happening here. But they have, I didn't say this before, but everybody in the AFC West is going to play three opponents, or they're going to play each other twice. And they're all going to have the same opponents from the AFC North and the NFC South. So that's going to make up. What is that? 14 of their games right there. And then they all play an opponent from the AFC West. And obviously, as every other team does, they play the person or play the team that finished at the same position they did last year within the AFC in the divisions that they are not playing. So, unique opponents for the Chargers. They go to the Cardinals. Uh, they get the Titans at home, and then they have to go to the Patriots in December. Now, the Patriots are, are an interesting team, and this is a game that I thought could go either way, especially in December at Foxborough. But ultimately, when I look at their schedule, I do think this is going to be the second-best team in the division, even with the key losses. I just think Jim Harbaugh, as a head coach, is too good to do poorly here. He has made every team that he's ever gone to great. I think in year one, he'll have decent success. Reasonably, looking at their schedule, because they finished so bad last year, they do get a little bit more favorable schedule. 
The best I see them doing. Absolute best. Everything goes perfect. 11 and 6. That's your ceiling. Your floor, things could go poorly. It could be a rough year. You might have some trouble meshing that offensive line together. You might not get the production you need out of guys like Lad McConkey, DJ Shark, Quentin Johnson. I think um, Josh Palmer is still there as well. You might not get the production. That's not necessarily the most inspiring receiving core there. But I do think 6 and 11 is your floor. And I'm going to be generous and give you a 10 and 7 season, which probably will be good enough to sneak into a wild card spot. It's not going to be good enough to win this division, though. We're going to talk about that when we get to the obvious clear front runner for this division. Moving on, though, we're going to go and talk about the Las Vegas Raiders. This is a game that I, or the team that I will be seeing live in December, as I'm going to go to the Falcons uh, Monday night football game. Hopefully, it doesn't get flexed out uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, so I will be going to, the, uh, to that with some friends. But you finished 8-9 and nine last year. Again, you have all the same opponents with a unique opponent from the NFC West and some unique opponents from the AFC East and the AFC South. Your unique opponents this year are going to be the, at the Rams, at the Dolphins, which is in November, so it's not going to be the advantage that you think it is going to Miami. Uh, and then you get the Jaguars in December at home. Now, that's not the easiest schedule in the world. I think all those teams are potentially losses for you. You don't have a great quarterback situation. You took Brock Bowers, which I love in the draft, uh, just because I love Brock Bowers. You still have Devontae Adams, but you're going to be rocking with one of your additions or with Aiden O'Connell. So your notable additions for this team are Gardner Minshew on a two-year deal as a bridge quarterback, whether that's a bridge to Aiden O'Connell or whether that's a bridge to sucking this year and getting a solid draft uh, next year at quarterback, whether it's a good draft or bad draft, who knows. That's something that's worth noting here, so we'll see. But you're getting Gardner Minshew, who's probably going to be starting day one. Solid guy. He ended up almost taking Indianapolis to a playoff last year. Uh, you're having to replace running back, which we're going to come to in a minute, but you're getting Amir Abdullah, who has been a disappointment, to say the least, in the NFL, and Alexander Madison, who was great when he had a solid piece in front of him when he was just a backup, but when he got the uh, when he got the star role, just completely fell apart last year in Minnesota. You're getting Michael Gallup. Uh, one, you know, we'll, we'll see if he can stay healthy. I have no faith in that. Jalen Guyton as well. Andres Pete uh, at offensive tackle. Andre James signing a th- uh, re-signing a three-year deal there. Uh, and then you get Christian Wilkins as your huge signing. So you're going to have a formidable defensive line. Whether everything else falls in place for you, I don't know, but. That's notable to me. As far as the departures go, you're losing Jimmy G, you're losing Brian Hoyer. Josh Jacobs is the biggest loss for this team. Um, Austin Hooper you're losing at uh, tight end, though he didn't do much for you. You're losing Hunter Renfro, who's been a staple of your team. Um, losing Jermaine uh, Illuminor. I can't ever say his name, but to the Giants at tackle. Uh, losing uh, Meek Robbins, uh, Robertson as a safety. Losing Bilal Nichols at defensive line. So it's going to be tough to replace these losses, and I don't think you have the easiest schedule in the world, even though you're going to be playing all the opponents in the NFC South, which a lot of people look down on. I think three of those teams are not going to be easy outs for you, my Falcons being one of them, and I think you will beat the Panthers. But ultimately, I do think your ceiling is only 9-8. and eight. I don't think you can do better than that. I, I just don't see how it ends up working out for you any other way. Uh, I think your floor could be as low as 4-13. and 13. You could be a really bad football team this year, especially given the quarterback play. The Falcons are a team that can speak to having bad quarterback play and solid pieces around them. It just usually doesn't work out and has left us picking eighth overall for the last three years. So I do think that this could be a bad year for you. Reasonably, I do have you finishing a little bit worse and going 7-10, and 10, but being on a path to potentially getting better, Maybe getting a quarterback in free agency next year. Who knows? Maybe you can get Russell Wilson if he's not if he's just on that one year deal uh, with Pittsburgh, and they end up going Justin Fields. Who knows? But I think you should have made a bigger push for guys like Justin Fields in the draft or with your draft capital this year. Uh, moving on, though, uh, we have the Kansas City Chiefs. This is their division to lose. There's no other way to say it. Even with potentially losing Rasheed Rice because of stupidity off field for we don't know how long at the time of making this video, I anticipate it's going to be a significant suspension for getting in trouble with the law. 
Uh, you have an okay draft. You end up getting Xavier Worthy, who is Speed Demon uh, 2.0, and I don't know that he's going to have the hands to, to be great, but you take him in the first round. You get uh, Kingsley, so Samadia, offensive tackle out of Brigham Young. No clue about that guy. Couldn't even tell you. And then you had a bunch of day two picks that may end up being good. You didn't lose a lot here. You lost some things. You're losing Blaine Gabbert, which is not the worst thing in the world as a backup quarterback. Uh, I do know Blaine Gabbert's cousin, so I'm not going to speak particularly bad on him. He just has never really panned out for an NFL uh, NFL quarterback as a starter. Uh, you're getting MVS, which is not necessarily a big addition. He's not going to make any big moves for you until playoff time because that's just traditionally how he does. Uh, you're or sorry, you're losing him. So you're losing uh, Donovan Smith. You're losing Nick Alle Allegretti at center. You're losing Willie Gay Jr. The biggest loss for you is Legereus Sneed in a trade to the Titans. And the Titans are going to feel great about that. I don't know why they feel great about it because they're still probably going to have a bad year. And you're losing Jared McKinnon, who's been a staple of your team for a little while now. Your additions, though, things that you're bringing on. Uh, Carson Wentz is going to be your backup quarterback. So even if... You end up with an injury to Patrick Mahomes. I think you're still going to have decent quarterback play. I'm surprised you guys brought back Clyde edwards helaire CEH getting a one-year deal. I don't even know the, the details of that. One of your big signings, Mark, or Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, you're getting a one-year deal on him, so he's basically a rental for $11 million. I think that's a solid deal. You get Travis Kelsey re-signing. You get uh, Chris Jones, which is your huge move of the offseason, re-signing to a five-year, $158.75 million contract with two-thirds of that guaranteed. Um, so basically you're guaranteeing three years, and then you have some void or option years in the last two, so not an awful contract there. Uh, getting Matt Ariza, who, as many of you know, was cut from the Bills, or initially drafted by the Bills, ended up going through some allegations that were ultimately in the court of law deemed to be false, and again, a guy who was falsely accused of some stuff, but he's getting a chance. He was a guy who was known for being an excellent punter in college, and this will be really his first big chance since all that went down. Uh, you re-signed Michael Donna, uh, Dana, Donna, uh, edge rusher, so you basically get him for $24 million, 13 of that guaranteed, but you're keeping your core together, and again, your draft is not terrible. You didn't need a ton, and this is your, this is truly your division to lose until proven otherwise. Now, you do have tough opponents. You went 11-6 and six last year, and it didn't look like you were going to do that for a while. You were having a struggle bus to start with. But you have to go to the 49ers, you have to go to the Bills in November, and you have to play the Texans at home. That's your prize for being number one in the division, is you have to play tougher opponents than everybody else. Now, reasonably speaking, I do think this is a team that, when I look at everything, knowing that Patrick Mahomes is currently the best NFL quarterback, I think 12 and 5 is your ceiling. I just I, I don't know that you win more than that. 13 and 4 you could convince me of, but I don't think you win more than that no matter what. I do think that you have the narrowest range of all in this division. I think if everything went poorly, you're still going to go 10 and 7, and ultimately I do have you finishing the exact same as you did last year, 11 and 6. And that will be good enough to win the division. And I don't think you're going to have to sweat it. Even though I have the Chargers finishing 10-7, and seven, I think that you're going to be sitting guys in that last game of the year and they're going to be playing guys and you're already going to have a two-game lead on them by the time you get there. So it's not going to be something you have to worry about. Then we come to the Denver Broncos. And boy, oh boy, oh, Russell Wilson played better last year, but he has checked down Charlie and you are starting fresh. Taking the, the sixth quarterback in the draft in the first round in Bo Nix getting Jonah Ellis in the third round at edge getting Troy Franklin at wide receiver who may end up being good from Oregon solid guy who just has probably a, a, a rough draft grade there as far as your gains go here you fin you know you finished eight nine last year but you trade for Zach Wilson who <laughs> reasonably might be your starter on day one which I have zero confidence in you get uh, Lil Jordan Humphrey on a one-year deal. Josh Reynolds coming in at wide receiver. You're going to need him because you end up, because of your losses. Uh, you end up getting a couple of guys on just one-year deals. Josh Franklin Myers in a trade. Malcolm Roach on a two-year deal. Nothing that's inspiring a ton of confidence here. There were no major huge signings for your team this year. And you couldn't because you cut Russell Wilson and took, I think it was what, you're taking $80 million in dead cap over the next two years, something like that, which is insane. It just tells you how much this coaching staff disliked Russell Wilson for them to move on. Um, and again, notable losses, Russell Wilson going away. Uh, Jerry Judy traded to the Browns. Jerry Judy's still probably going to be the wide receiver, too, on the team that he goes to. Um, 
You uh, lose Lloyd Cushenberry. You lose Jonathan Harris. Josie Jewell, you're losing Fabian Moreau and Justin Simmons. This is going to be a tough team to, or tough things to replace, and I don't know that you did it in the draft. You're not inspiring me at all, and I think, and I just don't know how this team is going to do. They went eight and nine last year. You have to go to the Seahawks on week one is one of your unique opponents. You have at the Jets in week four if Aaron Rodgers is healthy. You ain't winning that game. Uh, and it's also a little bit of a revenge game for you because of the offensive coordinator situation there. And then the Colts in December, at home, uh, you get them in Denver. None of those are easy games, even though you're, you know, even though some of those teams didn't perform well last year. None of those this year are going to be easy games. I cannot, in good conscience, have this team, even with Bo Nix, even if he ends up being great. I'm sorry, Brandon Perna. I'm sorry, that's good sports. I'm sorry, Broncos Nation. This is going to be a rebuild year. This is going to be a retool year. Your best that I can even reasonably see you do is 7-10, and 10, still losing. Everything is losing on this. I have you going 2-15 and 15 at your worst, and I think that's a realistic possibility. Just because I do think your coaching staff is good and I do think he'll find a way to sneak some games out, I'm going to say you go 5-12. and 12. I can make an argument for 4-13 and 13 very easily. I think you're picking in the top five this year, whether that's to – Beef up some key positions, get a wide receiver that you desperately need because Sutton is great, but I don't know how good he's going to be with a rookie quarterback. And again, I don't know how good you're going to do with Josh uh, Josh Reynolds as wide receiver too. Guys, I don't know. This is going to be a tough year for you, uh, but that's how I have it finishing. So again, just to recap, we have the Chiefs finishing at 11 and six, number one overall in the division. Uh, we have the Chargers finishing at 10-7. and seven. I think it's a little generous. You could convince me of 9-8. and eight, Still going to be good enough to finish number two. You have the Raiders finishing at 7-10. and 10, Good enough for number three and probably a top 12 pick again. And then you have the Broncos finishing at 5-12, and 12, which I think is going to be bad enough or good enough, if you're, depending on your perspective, for a top five pick in this coming draft. That's what I got for you. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I only have one more division to talk about. I think it's going to be the most competitive and interesting division to watch. Every single team in it is good and has made some really key additions to be better for uh, the year for this coming year. It's going to be an interesting AFC North, to put it the least, and I think every single one of those teams has the potential to be a playoff team, but we'll get to it when we get to it. It'll probably be Friday this week. Thank you for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing. I appreciate you watching my rambling as I was kind of doing this live. And as always, rise up.